What's going on YouTube? Brandon here from BNT's Radical Boas and Pythons and today we're going to be talking about different types of snake enclosures. So we're going to get started right now. Okay, so today we're going to talk about snake enclosures and the different types of enclosures you will need. Say that uh, you are a beginner and you just bought a new snake and you're wondering, man, what do I need for this snake? Uh, let's say that you bought a I don't know, a baby king snake or a baby corn snake, a baby ball python, just an example, okay? Uh, so what you're more than likely gonna end up starting with or doing is you're gonna go to Petco or PetSmart or Petland or Pet Supply Plus or any pet store and you're probably gonna buy one of these. Now, this is a 10 gallon aquarium, is all this is. Um, you can actually purchase a kit that has everything that you need in it, or you can go the cheaper route and get each individual thing that you need. Um, so all I did was I put some shavings in the bottom of this. Now this is pine. I would highly suggest not to use pine and do not use cedar chips. Do not do it, guys. Cedar chips is toxic to your snake. Um, this is pine in here because I'm using this as a mice enclosure right now because I don't use these for my snakes anymore. But, um, Say, for instance, that you went and bought a 10 gallon aquarium. So you're gonna need, first off, some bedding. Um, I would start out with either aspen, cypress mulch, ripti chip is a great one. Uh, there's a uh, ripti bark, I think is the name of it. There's uh, one that's called forest floor. That one is a good one to hold humidity. There's a lot of options out there for snake bedding. There's also those, uh, it's an actual like snake carpet. I wouldn't really suggest those because they like to climb up underneath them and hide a lot and then you're never going to really see your snake. But anyways, you're going to take this put some say aspen in here on the bottom then you're going to want to buy a hide uh, or you can make a hide you can take um, you seen it in the last video you can take a uh, wash tub it's one of the little small wash tubs cut a hole in it makes a great hide it wouldn't in this because this is a smaller enclosure um, you could take a little serving dish that are about this big, they're black, you can buy them at Walmart, like 10 in a pack. They'll cut a hole in that, makes a great hide. I've seen people use cardboard boxes, little small ones in these, make a great hide. Uh, for this example, um, at your pet store, you're more than likely gonna find reptile hides that look something like this. This is like a little half of a log. It's really nice, by the way. It's pretty heavy. And you're just gonna place it on one side of the enclosure, just like this, okay? Um, the next thing that you're absolutely gonna need is a water bowl. Um, again, you can use any type of bowl that you want. Just remember, the heavier that that snake gets, 
the more it's going to press down on the sides of the bowl and tip it over. So if I were you, I would just start out with a good ceramic bowl. You wanna put that right in the corner. Now, you wanna put your water dish on the cold side or the, uh, I guess you would say the non-heated side of the enclosure or else your water is just going to evaporate and your snake's always gonna be out of water basically. Um, so now th th that you have a hide, you have a water dish and you have your bedding, that is pretty much all that you're gonna need for the inside of this enclosure. Um, and again, th these work absolutely great for any uh, smaller snake. And then what you're gonna need for the outside of the enclosure is you're gonna need one of these screen, I don't know if you can see that on camera good or not, but th th this is a wire mesh screen top lid it goes right on the top just like that now uh a lot of people have issues with snakes getting out of these that's because they do not have locks these are cage locks that hook on the end it's right here just like that and it holds this down to where the snake will not escape at all or you can just uh, go a cheaper route and put something really heavy on each end of this like a book or a, a brick you know anything that has some weight to it to hold this down good okay now the next thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna need some heat because Snakes need heat to digest their food. So, uh, on on tanks like this, my nose is itching off, excuse me guys. Um, you have options of a heating pad or a heat lamp. Now, th this one, I don't have a bulb in or nothing like that because I'm just using it as an example. The heating pad, you would place up under the tank, up under the hide over here, because, you know, snakes love to hide and stay warm, so you would place that up underneath one side of the enclosure. That way, your snake has an option of either heating up or cooling down on this side, okay? Um, if you have a heat lamp, you're going to want a, uh, for this size of tank, I would do like a 50 watt to a 75 watt heat bulb. You can get a infrared or you can get one that looks like a normal light and you just place it right here on the top. It will not burn through this. It will not. Uh, because this is a very sturdy wire mesh and you just plug it up into the wall, switch it on, and there you have it. Um, if you're going to do a heat lamp, again, uh, you would only want to do a 50 watt or a 75 watt in this size of enclosure. With that, I have never used a thermostat. I have always turned it on in the day, turned it off at night. Um, for the heat and pad, I always, 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 always use either a rheostat or a thermostat. And again, I explained all of those in the last video. I will put a link up to that in the description. Uh, so you, you would plug your heating pad into your thermostat or your rheostat and plug the rheostat or the thermostat into the wall 
and set it at a certain temperature. And you will want to do that because if you don't have a thermostat or a real stat hooked up to a heating pad, trust me, you are going to burn your snake alive. And that is just cruelty. So, uh, okay, that's it for this type of enc enclosure. Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next type of enclosure I have is uh, pretty simple and it's pretty cheap. It is simply a tote. These work absolutely great, guys. Um, for a baby snake, as in a corn snake, king snake, baby ball python, uh, baby blood python even, uh, you would use a tote. Um, again, this is just a, another option, a cheaper option. Uh, in here, I have some cypress mulch. I would spray that down really well. It holds humidity very good. And you just want to take, I took a uh, soldering iron and just poke some holes all the way around this. And that's just for the ventilation and breathing purposes. I also put some holes in the top of this lid. And again, that's for ventilation and breathing purposes. Now, if you wanted to hold more humidity in this, you would make uh, fewer holes. And I also wouldn't have as many holes in the top either because it would help to hold the humidity in. And again, uh, you just wanna place a water bowl in there. Some people will put hides in there, some people don't. Uh, these can be used in snake racks, and uh, I'll show you those here in just a few minutes. And also, these can just be used just like this. Um, again, you're going to want a heating source, so we go back to the good old heating pad. And again, up under one end of the tank, or of the tote, excuse me. And uh, you want to have a thermostat, real stat, something like that to control the temperature. Um, or you could use what is called heat tape. And uh, you can buy that in rolls and you can place a piece of heating tape up underneath here uh, and it works basically the same as a heating pad. In a snake rack, you also have to use heating tape and I'm gonna show you that in just a few minutes. Okay, so this is a six quart tote right here. This is what I would use for a baby snake, not even a juvenile, a baby, okay? Um, so the next size up from that would be a 15 quart tote. Again, I would have some uh, cypress mulch in here or some aspen, um, whatever you prefer. For, um, I've actually seen people even use paper or paper towels because it's an easier cleanup. Uh, and you can keep your enclosure very clean that way. And again, I've just placed a bunch of holes all around the top of this. Now this I would use for like a juvenile snake, uh, as in a juvenile uh, blood python or a ball python that is a juvenile or a uh, king snake or corn snake, something like that, that is a juvenile snake. Um, you can use these, but be careful with the lids because these lids are very easy to pop off, very easy, and you're going to lose your snake if you don't have some kind of weight on top of it or some kind of clips to hold it down.
okay? Um, and again, you're going to want to use the trusty heat pad on it. Under one side, put your hide under this end of it, put a water bowl under that end of it. Perfect enclosure for a juvenile snake. Now, if you wanted something more secure, I would go with a tote like this for a juvenile. Only because of it has a locking lid. I love these enclosures. Uh, these totes, I'm sorry. Because th they have a lot more room, I feel like, in here. And again, uh, this is also a 15 cord enclosure that I would use for a juvenile snake. And you just put your lid on there and it locks with these locks right here just like that and your snake is not going to get out of that if they do they are freaking houdini um again if you feel more safe you can put something heavy on here and again go with the trusty old heat pad up under one end of it water bowl hide you have an enclosure Okay, so now, let's say that you're planning on raising up uh, more than one snake. Yes, you can have multiples of these and multiple heating pads run on them or something like that. Uh, but you're going to be drawing in a lot of energy if you do that. So therefore, the next thing thing I would recommend is a snake rack and I'm going to show you that right now okay guys so here we have my snake rack now it's only showing on camera that I have uh, three drawers but it actually has six drawers I'm just kind of up close here to give you a good presentation of everything so, these are 32 quart tubs, uh, and these are housing my two ball pythons and my four blood pythons. Now, uh, I'm just going to show you a good example of this here. Um, in here, oh, we got a Fresh shit. Look at there. That's always a plus. Get that out of there. So now, we got a 32 quart tub in here. And we have a hide. We have a water dish. And in the back of the rack, if you look straight back there, in the back, that is heat tape. This right back there is called heat tape, and that is actually ran all the way down the back of my snake rack. And that will keep my snakes heated as I have it plugged up to a rheostat. Um, again, I like to keep my juvenile to sub-adults in this rack and i'll show you one of the bloods here if i don't get bit hopefully this is about a juvenile blood python right here this is a golden eye male beautiful beautiful boy i love this boy to death he is tamed out so very 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 well um, on the inside of this enclosure, I have cypress mulch and sphagnum moss. Now, I have sphagnum moss in there for the blood pythons just to help with humidity. It will hold humidity very, very, very well along with the cypress mulch. Um, and again, you can see here that I have all these tags on here. And I'm going to make a video about um, 
how I electronically keep r records one of these days. But anyways, that's, uh, that is another option for your snakes is a 32 quart snake rack. Now, snake racks come in all shapes and sizes. You can get ones that hold a six quart tubs across here. Uh, you can get ones that hold 15 quart, 32 quart, I think up to uh, 75 quarts actually uh, f for your l larger snakes. So uh, we're going to move on to the next t type of enclosure we have here. All right, now. Let's say that you have a snake that is growing longer instead of, uh, I guess you would say, more plump, like a B Burmese python. And here I have my male albino 100% het for granite Burmese python. Uh, yes, the enclosure is a little dusty. Sorry about that. Um, the, these guys just have never liked having a hide. I don't know why. They just don't enjoy it. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up and show you. Again, I love these totes that have the uh, latches on them. Right here, they lock in very, very well. Okay, now... So here we have our male Burmese python. Hey, buddy, you, your head's dirty. You've been rooting. Anyways, don't go in there. Anyways, um, so over here on the right side underneath this, I have a heating pad. And I have my probe ran in right through there, as you can see. And that will tell the real stat that... Um, it will control the temperature, if you will. And here we have our water bowl on the opposite side of the enclosure. And here we got this pretty boy. He's such a good boy. So anyways, um, I would use something like this for a little bit of a longer snake like these guys are Th they get more longer quicker I guess you would say than they do plump so uh, for right now and only for now I have them in these totes go ahead and put the lid back on there and we will move on to the next one. All right, guys, and the last but not least, the big boy enclosures, as I call them. Um, these are super, super, super nice enclosures. Um, I bought these from, I'm pretty sure I bought them from TripleLReptile.com. I will leave a link in the description for them as well. Um, I bought six of these with heat tape that's up under each enclosure. Um, they have these awesome opening doors like this that lock. And again, um, over here on the right side of each enclosure, I have the heat source with a hide. And then over here on the left side, I have water bowls for everybody. This little girl is dying to bite me right now. I know that you probably can't see it, but she's dying to eat me alive right now. <laughs> so uh, these are all the boa enclosures and they will remain in these probably the rest of their lives because uh 
Boas only get about eight foot long, and uh, the, these are four foot cages, so that should be plenty of room. Um, I will also be breeding in these enclosures as of this coming year, which I cannot wait. It's, it's going to be awesome. I'm going to keep everybody posted on all that. Um, the Burmese pythons, as they grow up, they're going to get like anywhere from 14 to 16 feet long. Uh, weight, I'm honestly not sure. I know some can get close to like 200 pounds plus sometimes. Um, so I will be getting eight foot enclosures to put either in here or in the new snake building that we will be making in the near future. So anyways, uh, again, you can order these enclosures on Triple L Reptile. You can order them on, I think it's called Boa File. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, uh, there's a lot of people who has this type of enclosure. Uh, some have the sliding glass doors, which are nice. Uh, some have a one solid door that folds down like that all the way across. Um, I personally, I don't like those just because when you go to put a snake in its enclosure, you could put it in here and it's coming out this way before you have it actually in that enclosure. With two doors, you can keep one of these closed, have one of them open, and as the snake travels inwards in here, it is blocked from coming back out of its enclosure. So anyways, guys, that's all I have for um, snake enclosures. If you have any questions, hit me up down in the comments, or you can hit me up through email at btradicalboas at yahoo.com. Again, that is btradicalboas at yahoo.com. Or you can hit me up on Facebook Messenger. Um, you can hit me up on the Facebook page. All of that good stuff. I have a TikTok, Instagram, all the good social media stuff. So just... Hit me up if you have any questions. We'll see you next time.